Audition CS6 has a new feature called Clip Time Stretching. It allows you to change the duration or pitch of a clip inside a multi-track session in real time. It's a powerful feature, and I think you'll enjoy working with it. So to follow along, just go get this one file, this multi-track session, 0905 Clip Time Stretch by going to Working Files, Multi-Track Sessions. Scroll down, and there it is. And it brings in these three files and puts them inside the multi-track session. Now this is not the way any normal multi-track session would look. It's three completely different types of clips, but I'm bringing them here for demonstration purposes. We won't listen to them all at the same time. We'll listen to them one at a time. So this is the default view when you open up a multi-track session, and the interesting little tidbit for this tutorial is this button right there. It's called the Global Clip Stretching Toggle Switch. When that is depressed, when it's down, when it's on, that means that global time stretching or clip time stretching is available here inside a multi-track session, and that's on by default. When it's on, little triangles appear in the corners of each clip. All the clips have those triangles in the corners. You can't see the one on the right here because it extends way off to the right. But that's how those guys work. These little triangles appear. When you hover your cursor over the end of a clip inside a multi-track session, it turns into a trim tool. When you trim a clip, you're actually trimming away sound. You're trimming away audio. You're not trimming it from the original clip, but you are trimming it from what you're going to hear in a multi-track session. That's trimming away sound. The stretch side of things is different. It doesn't take away sound. It just extends the length of it. It stretches it out or shrinks it down. See how the difference there? As you hover your cursor over it, you can see that your cursor turns into a little double arrow with a little stopwatch down below there. And also it says stretch. How convenient is that? There we go. So there we go, that's how that works. And when that guy's on, those little triangles are there. When it's off, that little icon, that little tool will not appear. You can't stretch it. If you just pull it in this way, it's going to be a trim, and you can't make it any longer because you can't add audio. So that's the difference. So turn that guy back on. When you do turn that on, you have some properties that you can work on when you stretch your clips. And those properties appear over here on the Properties panel. So you need to click on the Properties panel tab to go there. If it's not available, if you don't see it, you can always go Window Properties, and that'll make it show up front and center. And right now it's a little bit dropped off the bottom here, so I'm going to pull this up just a tad so you can see the whole thing there. There's a properties panel for the multi-track session, which has a stretch option. If I were looking at a single file, its properties would not have a stretch option over here, as you can see, just these two options. But I go back to the multi-track session, and that properties panel has these three, info basic settings and stretch. And right now it says stretch is off, because this particular clip doesn't have any stretch applied to it. I haven't changed it. This little properties panel is based on a per clip thing. So there are settings here that apply to individual clips as you work on them. So I want to change the stretch on this Gettysburg narration so that we can hear it without hearing the other guys. I'm going to solo this track by clicking on solo. And here's how it sounds. You've heard it before. Four score and seven years ago. Kind of quiet, so I'm going to raise the volume a little bit. Our father has brought forth a little more obvious. So I want to stretch this out. In fact, stretch is not the term I would use here. I want to shrink it down to fit a 10 second time frame. So I'm going to hover my cursor over the end here. It turns into that little stretch tool and I drag it to the left. And now it's two seconds shorter. And now this thing all starts firing up. It says real time, polyphonic. And these are the default settings when you start changing the duration of a clip in terms of stretching it or shrinking it. Now real time is the one option and the other option is rendered. Now, normally when you think rendered, you think I'm going to change the clip. And in fact, that's sort of what's happening. If you click rendered instead of real time, what happens is that when you make a change, it creates a temporary file tucked away in some temp folder someplace. But it's not a file that will change the original one. You're not going to get a little asterisk next to the file. You get one next to the multi-track session because you've changed the session, but you're not going to change the original file. It puts this temporary file in some folder and then if you do what's called a mix down of a multi-track session, it will use that temporary file when it makes the mix down, but it won't save it as a separate thing later when you close the session. It'll come back if you decide to open a session with a stretch clip back there again. So that's good to know. You're not changing the original clip, even though it's rendering something in a distant temporary folder someplace. But rendering is a better way to change the pitch or the change time because it makes a higher quality sound. Let's listen to what the difference is here. Here we go. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. So that audio is coming off that rendered clip. If I go back to the real time setting, which is the default setting, then it would sound probably very similar. Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition. And that's playing right off the clip instead of playing off that temporary file. Let's look down a little bit farther. It says type 
polyphonic. Well, polyphonic means that it's expecting you to be working with a clip with multiple voices or multiple instruments. Well, that's not the case here. So let's switch over to what this one is, which is monophonic. Now that would also affect the way this sounds, but my guess is it won't be dramatically different. Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. But it is better to choose monophonic when you're working with a single vocalist or a single instrumentalist. There's one more item in the type drop-down list called vary speed. If I click on that, what that does is it changes not only the duration, but also the pitch. So when you change the duration, the pitch changes in concert, hand-in-hand hand with it. So now that I've shrunk the duration here, it'll make things go faster, which makes the pitch go up. Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. It actually does a pretty good job of raising the pitch when you reduce the time. That's a pretty good little effect, but that's not what I want right now. I'm going to switch back to monophonic. Under the advanced section, precision is set to high by default, and there's really no reason for you to change that. Your processor probably should have no trouble dealing with something set to high. The transient sensitivity is turned off now. It's available only in the polyphonic mode, but it tries to keep the sound accurate when you're in the polyphonic side of things. And the window size says how many milliseconds will it be looking at at a time as it makes the corrections. I've noticed when I take it down lower, when you think it would actually be more accurate, it starts breaking up the audio a little bit. So I just accept the 37 millisecond default setting. Down here grayed out, it says preserve formats. That appears only if you switch from real time to rendered. And preserving formats is another way to try to preserve the original characteristics of the sound. So it's a good thing to have on when you use the rendered side of things, and it's on by default anyways. So I'm going to go back to the real time again. All right, so now we've worked on this guy just to change the duration. I'm going to go to the vocalist now. I'm going to turn off the solo there for that one and turn on the solo for the vocalist and go over to her. Now when I select her, this will change because it's on a clip by clip basis. So right now it's off. If I want to, let's say, make her go a little bit slower by stretching her out, then that'll turn on in a second when I go, let's say, 120% or so. Then this guy will all turn on. It says polyphonic again, so let's switch it back to monophonic. Let's see what that sounds like. Too hard to find. Ooh, very smoky, or maybe she's in some kind of a lounge in Las Vegas, but we don't really want that. Let's make her go a little bit faster, so let's shrink it down to, let's say, 85% or so. Let's know that instead. Bring this over. Yeah. Hard to find. A little bit faster. Just too hard to find. So again, the timbre of her voice is pretty good for making it 15% faster, bringing it down to 85% of its original length. So that's basically how that works in terms of the mono side of things. Let's go over to this instrumental mix. We'll solo this and get this guy going here. So this is a polyphonic sound, and so polyphonic would be the right thing to choose for this guy. So I'm going to just click on it to make sure it's active, and then we're going to stretch it a little bit. Now this is a longer clip, and so I'm going to stretch up or expand the view by pressing the backslash key so I can see the whole thing here. Let's just make this guy shorter by quite a bit. We'll bring it down to, let's say, 250 or something like that. And now this will all turn on. It is polyphonic by default, which is what we've got here. So let's see what that sounds like. Just faster. We can make it slower. But again, the quality of the music is pretty good. That's pretty remarkable. Let's take it up to about 120% or so. Right there and try that now. now. In this case, we see that when the polyphonic is set, the transient sensitivity is available to be changed. Let's just increase that and see if that changes the quality here. Hard to detect some obvious difference, but I would you know set it a little bit higher in case you want to try to get a little bit better quality. Let's switch over to the rendered view. Let's see how that one works here. It's going to take a while because it's a fairly big file, so it's going to take a few minutes. So I'll just pause here while we do that, and then we'll come back in a second. All right, there you go. That three-minute or so file took about three minutes to render. So just be aware that if you do want to have a higher quality sound when you're working with the clip time stretching feature, then you probably want to first do it in real time, and then when you've got everything all settled exactly the way you want it, then you switch over to rendered because it will be a time-consuming thing. But let's just see how it worked. Sounds fine. We slowed it down in terms of its duration, but the timbre, the quality of the instrument, sounds very good. So I think the clip time stretching feature is an effective tool. It really works well. It works in real time, and it works right here inside the multi-track session.